I've built three awnings on this YouTube channel. We have the 180 degree awning. We have a very budget friendly 270 degree awning. And then what I have behind me is the fastest deploying self-supported DIY awning that you're gonna find. I think this might be my best build yet. Check it out. So this build was inspired by the Kinsman awning by Kinsman Hardware. They're a small company out of South Carolina. Definitely go check them out. There's a lot of similarities between my build and their awning. But just like everything else overlanding, they're extremely expensive. This build cost me under $300 to build. It's made almost completely out of half inch EMT conduit that you find at Lowe's or Home Depot. And the canopy is made out of a waterproof pergola cover that I found online. So let's get in the shop and I'll show you guys how I built this thing. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I do really detailed DIY builds. So be sure to hit subscribe. Also hit the bell notification because I don't upload very often. I'm also not one of those really funny YouTubers, just to be forewarned. Let's get into this build. All right, to get started on this project, this is the materials that I'm going to be using, starting with the body of the awning. This is three quarter inch square steel tubing, 14 gauge. And then for the bracket that we're going to build that holds everything together, we're using a piece of five inch, three sixteenth inch plate steel. It's about 18 inches or so. I don't think it needs to be a quarter inch thick, but I'll let you know if we need to bump that up. And then for the arms of the awning that hold our fabric, we're actually gonna be using half inch EMT conduit. You can get this at Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, any electrical hardware store is gonna have it. And the reason we're using electrical conduit is because it's a lot lighter, a lot cheaper, and it's gonna be plenty strong. I really don't think there's any reason to build the arms of the awning out of three quarter inch steel. This is gonna be plenty strong. In terms of order of operation here, I think it'll be easier to build the awning arms and then build the uh, body of the awning and the bracket to fit those arms. I think that'll work a little bit better than the other way around. So I've already done my measurements. I think I'm gonna do two arms that are seven feet long. They're, they'll be built identically. And then uh, the third arm will be seven foot two and it will be made a little bit differently. So yeah, I'll show you that. Let's get started building these arms. All right, I'm in my driveway and this is how I'm getting the measurements for everything. I just have everything drawn out in chalk. It's kind of like CAD on the computer. Well, I guess it still is CAD because this is a chalk aided design. Um, but this is just a great way to visualize everything. You can even park your vehicle right here just to be able to see how much space you're gonna have underneath your awning. So this guy right here, this represents the body of the awning and that will be mounted to your vehicle. And then as you know, these three guys will be the arms that hold the fabric. I really just want the fabric to be as simple as possible. So we're going to have one big rectangle that goes out to here. And then this piece will go a little square will go out from there. So we'll have one stitch across here and then a hem all around the edges. And then we'll have to figure out a way to attach the fabric to our arms. But I don't think that'll be very hard. But yeah, this is how I'm doing the measurements. I'd recommend doing it like this if you can. Um, just to be able to visualize everything. And, and if you don't want yours to be exactly the way mine is. This is a, a good way to modify it, I guess. So, yeah, let's uh, let's get started building. All right, I have four pieces of conduit cut to seven feet. And so what I'm doing now is just trying to decide between the two whether I wanted more of like a triangular arm. I think I'm leaning towards the parallel shape. It might have like a slight taper towards the end. But I just like the way this looks better. And then with the off cuts that we just cut off the 10 foot pieces, we're gonna cut some sections like this, kind of make a truss. All I've really cut is the two seven foot pieces and then I've cut two shorter pieces. One's four inches and one is four and three eighths. So our four inch piece is gonna go on this end. It's gonna be nice and flush here and here. And then the four and three eighths piece needs a little extra room our bars are still gonna stay four inches apart. We just need a little extra room here and here on the bracket side of things. So what we're gonna do on the hinge side of things, instead of using a, a skateboard bearing of any sort, we're just gonna weld on a washer. And um, 
the bearing or the washer, all it really does is it holds that through bolt, the bolt that's going to hold your arm to the bracket. It just needs to be centered. It's not like this has so much friction on it that it needs to have a bearing inside of it. It just needs to be centered in this piece. Otherwise, it would be too loose fitting inside that pipe there. So I think this is totally sufficient. It's going to be plenty strong. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld up this short section with my washers first before attaching it to my parallel poles this way and then we'll get the ends welded up. So yeah, let's get, let's get to it. One other thing I want to mention is after you make all your cuts for everything that you're going to weld on, go ahead and take off the galvanized coating, just sand it down. It's just a lot easier to remove that galvanized coating while it's not welded together. Uh, so yeah, just do that before welding. I do want to mention that the exact dimensions that I'm using isn't important because we're building the bracket to fit each arm. So you don't have to use my numbers if you don't want to. I just want my total bracket to be about five inches or so. So that's the reason I picked the numbers that I did. Uh, I think it's a little easier to build the arms first and then build the bracket to fit that and so set it the other way around. So just want to mention that the, the numbers themselves really don't matter as long as each arm is as consistent as possible. You want the arms to be all the same. So yeah, let's get back to it. The good thing about this whole thing is that if we screw up, it's really not that big a deal. We could just cut another piece, get another washer, and re-weld. But I'm just going to eyeball this, get it as centered as possible. And then we're just going to weld up along that lip. That looks pretty good. Nice and centered. Let's weld this thing up. Alright, so I ended up welding up three of them because the welds on the first one were just absolute garbage. And I just was like, I can't put that on YouTube. But these are how the, the last welds turned out. A lot better there. But that's how it goes. Sometimes you gotta kind of warm up to it. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use these two for the two arms that are gonna be the same. But the third arm is gonna be a little bit different on the hinge side. Um, it, it'll be the same thickness, but it, it'll be shaped differently. And I'll show you that as I go on. All right, our four and three eighths pieces, which are actually now four and a half, now that's all welded up. Those are gonna weld on just like that. I am going to go ahead and notch these pieces so it fits this round surface nicely. I'm going to do that on both sides so that we don't have any gap to deal with. All right, look how much better that looks, guys. All right, I'm starting on the hinge side of things because I want to make sure this is nice and square. The other end, it doesn't matter how off it is, uh, but this side matters. So we're going to just get this all nice and lined up, super square, get it welded, and then we'll tend to the other side. So that's what that looks like after it's all welded up. And then on the other side, got that welded up, but I also capped off the top. I put a washer up here, welded it, ground it all down, and then I welded up the center hole. And then on the bottom, I welded up another washer, but I left the hole open just in case I wanna support pole or something during high winds. So I left that open. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that yet, but I have it if I need it. So yeah, I just wanna show you that. All right, for the third and fourth arm, we're actually going to be making three miniature versions of this. We're going to be using sh three short sections of conduit with a bunch of washers. So that's what that'll look like once it's all welded up. And we'll stack those on top of each other, spaced by washers. And uh, it'll equal the same height as this piece right here. So yeah, let's get all this welded up. I wanted to zoom in on a piece and kind of show you how I'm getting this kind of stacked look. When I bring my welder to it, I'm aiming that wire tip right up here, kind of up on the cylinder a little bit. I'm not putting it down here in the crease. You'll blow out 
the edge of the washer here. So you start up here and I'm hitting here and it flows down on its kind of on its own. So it's up here and I kind of pull back and I go hit, pull back, hit, pull back, hit, pull back. I'm barely moving any distance at all. Yeah, I just wanted to zoom in and show you how I'm doing that. I've got our three pieces all welded up. So these are gonna be on a bolt just like this. Just like that. That looks really good. Now all we need to do is weld the third arm to the top and the bottom piece, and then the fourth arm will weld up right here so that it can rotate independently. But yeah, really happy with the way this is turning out. It's the perfect height. All right, for the sake of time, I went ahead and cut and notched everything, so I'll show you what I have. This third arm is 86 inches, so it's two inches longer than our completed seven foot arms. Um, and then, so we have two rails that are 86 inches, the top and the bottom one. And then the middle one is our fourth arm, which will pivot on this guy right here, and it's at 63 inches. And I left it a little bit long, I may need to trim it up. We'll just see how it fits later on. And then we have another angled piece here to match these arms and then a four inch piece that will weld there. And then since we can't have an angled piece right across here because it'll interfere with our fourth arm in the middle, I'm gonna take a piece of flat bar and we'll weld it in like that. So it's still gonna support the top and the bottom rails and our middle arm can still fold inside of it. So I think that looks really good. So yeah, let's get all this welded up and then we can start working on that bracket. All right, I got the bolt running through it. This top piece is just a spacer to get the nut on there and tighten everything up. So this is nice and straight and rigid. So now using my Sharpie right angle, we're gonna get this thing nice and squared up, get these pieces welded up. All right, we got the finished third and fourth arm. Since they're painted black, you're not even really going to be able to notice a difference. But really happy with the way those have turned out. Third arm just wants to kick out like that. So now that these three are done, we can move on to our bracket. It's going to hold everything together. So let's get to it. All right, we are back in CAD, if I can even say that. All right, quick overview of the dimensions now that everything's welded up. The base that we haven't completed is 90 inches, 85 inches, 85, 87 here, and then our fourth arm is 63. All right, it's time to move on to build the awning bracket. This is what holds our awning arms all together. Don't worry if your part doesn't look quite this nice. I spent a lot of time on it trying to make it look really pretty for YouTube. So we're gonna start off with a big piece of five inch flat bar. This is 3 16th inch thick, 24 inches long, and we're gonna use pretty much all of it. Let's get this thing built. All right, here's our flat bar. It's already five inches wide, so we'll just cut two eight inch sections. All right, I just brought the mock-up inside my shop because I was running out of light. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the five by eight flat bar that I just cut. We're going to place it right here and I'm gonna slide it underneath all of this. So that way we can mark those whole locations. We want this one to be far enough out this way to where when it opens, it clears the body of the awning here. And then we want it also far enough this way to where when it closes, it doesn't hit this one. That'll make more sense once I, once I show you it closed in a second. So let me get this underneath here, mark it out. We'll close it up, make sure those marks still work out. I'm gonna try to mark center with my pencil if I can. I'm also gonna mark 
around the edges with a Sharpie. All right, so now we'll just do the motions as it closes. Make sure we're right back on the, our marks. All the way around and back. That is just about perfect. This one could probably come a little closer. Honestly, I'm happy with that. About three inches off of our back plate right here. One thing to keep in mind is you want to make sure that you have enough room to weld back here where you're not going to interfere with the bolt that's going to go through here and the pivot point. So I brought it off this back plate just a little bit. I think there's more than enough room for it to be welded up and not interfere. Yeah, just want to mention that. Got it nice and tight right here. It's all nice and tight. Folded up right here perfectly. I'm going to go ahead, mark the centers of these on my plate and I'm going to show you exactly what those dimensions end up looking like. I'm trying to make a little tiny pencil mark. It's kind of difficult, but if you just lift up gently, that pencil will show you right where dead center is. All right, we got the centers marked. Oh my gosh, what have I done? I have to blur that out for YouTube. All right, we got the centers marked. Uh, I'm going to measure those so that you know exactly what they are, just in case you're following along with this exact build. But yeah. All right, really spoon feeding you here, but I like to be as thorough as possible on this channel and give you all the tools that you need for success. And just so I don't leave out the rest of the world, here you go, in millimeters. Man, y'all get so mad when I don't use the metric system, it's hilarious. Now that we have the bolt hole locations marked, I'm actually gonna tack weld these two plates together. That way when we move over to the drill press, drill through both pieces, they're exactly the same. All right, it's time to shape this thing up. We don't need a lot of this metal right in here. So what I'll do is I'll probably come straight across and then come to this corner and then we'll loop it back around. So we won't have any sharp corners or anything that's gonna get hung up on our awning bag. All right, I think this looks pretty good. We'll cut that out and we'll get that welded up. All right, so we got, I'll take it over to the belt sander, take off these sharp corners, and then we'll uh, take the tack welds out and break these two pieces apart. All right, that's all bolted up, and then our back plate will weld on just like that. All right, off camera, I cleaned the metal up. I got all the mill scale off. You want to do that, especially anywhere that you're going to be welding. So got all that cleaned up. Also cut off this extra piece of steel this way, except for this little inch and a half tab. I'm going to have a spring pin right here. And what that's going to do is when this fourth arm comes around, it's going to pin that arm in place so that I don't have to use like a... A strap or anything not a not a hundred percent necessary to have this part but uh, I think it would be a cool thing to add so that's what that little tabs for I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start tacking this in place and getting it welded up all right that's our bracket I'm gonna get that welded up All right, we got the bracket all welded up. I put all the pieces back together to see how everything fits. And the one hiccup that I did have was uh, that after these pieces were welded on, they tightened up. They tightened in, and I already built this whole entire thing to be really pretty tight tolerances. So it's not like I could just bend this back open. 
to make it fit. So what I had to do is I just had to t remove one of the washers. So um, I took the washers out on this side, separating this piece from these pieces. It does, I've already tested it out. It doesn't seem to be affecting it at all. But uh, yeah, that, that kind of squeezed in about a sixteenth of an inch to where I could not get a washer in on this side. So yeah, that's the only thing that happened. Not a big deal. I don't think it's going to affect it at all. I just tack welded the uh, bracket to my table. I just want to test out this bracket and see how strong it really is. So let's open this thing up. Got those just suspended right there. Open up the first one. So yeah, now we have all three arms hanging out just like that. And uh, it may look like this is touching the table, but it's not. It's actually, if you can see that, a nut right there. Or those are floating right above the surface of the table. So that table is not helping out at all. Yeah, that is pretty cool. So yeah, now that we know that bracket is super strong, we're going to move on to the body of the awning. This is the part of the awning that's mounted to the vehicle. This will be really simple. Um, just going to do a simple rectangular frame. Let's get to it. All right, I have the, the three quarter inch square tubing inside my bracket because I'm trying to figure out how wide I wanted the body of the awning to be. I was just going to make it five inches to match the thickness of the bracket, but I'm glad I didn't do that because I'm going to drill four holes in the bracket that bolt to the body of it. And then I want those bolts to go through the body and then into the bracket that we're going to make that will attach to the vehicle. So it'll all just be sandwiched together. And the reason I'm bolting it all together instead of like welding this to the body is because if I want to make a change later on, I just want to be able to unbolt it, change parts out, make improvements and that kind of thing. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to measure this out. It's going to be about four and a quarter wide to accommodate those bolt holes that'll go through right about there. Got my angled pieces welded in. I think I'm gonna do a small piece right under where the bracket's gonna go just for, you know, overkill. Just finished welding up the body of the awning and it's so much heavier than everything else. I was curious about the weight. So I weighed it, came in at 12 pounds and then I weighed one of the arms that I welded up out of conduit. And these were like 4.2 pounds. And all three, all four arms together were 15 pounds. So, man, if you were to build the entire arm out of three quarter inch, it would be extremely heavy. So yeah, really happy with the weight savings here. Still super strong. That is awesome. All right, we got the awning all back together. I really want to go test this out on the vehicle, uh, but I don't have any mounting brackets yet. I do have these brackets that I used on the first build. Um, these are just big 10 inch brackets that you can get at Lowe's, and I'm just really curious how these would do on a 270 awning that's self-supported. Uh, I think it'll be a little you know, flimsy, um, but you could also beef it up. I could weld on just some pieces like that and then really strengthen up this. And we're not using a lot of this portion. We'll end up cutting off the bracket, but I think this could work. We can beef it up pretty easily. And, uh, so it's rigid, but I want to see what it does just like in its, in this configuration. So I'm going to throw this on the vehicle real quick.
All right, we got the new and improved beefed up L bracket. I'll put in a before of what it was before I added the brace, but this is the after. And that's much more stiff than it was. I am gonna build a bracket specifically for my roof rack for this build, um, but I just wanted to show that those L brackets will work as long as you brace them up. But yeah, really happy with that. And it'll vibrate less once we have some fabric on here. So now that we know all that works, we're ready to get the fabric laid out. So I've decided that the fabric work really needs its own video. There's just so many details and this video would be an hour and a half long. So just enjoy this little build montage. And if you want the details on all the fabric work, building the canopy, that'll be in the next video. All right, so as you can see, the fabric is not where it needs to be. We have quite a bit of sag. I thought it was gonna be a little closer than this since we spent all that time with the tape and cutting everything out just perfectly to fit. Uh, but that's not always how things work, especially with fabric. And you would think maybe we should just open up the awning further and that would tighten things up, which it does just a little bit. But then you start swinging the arms around and things start getting out of square. I think the easiest thing to do is just to grab right here at this this corner and pull the fabric straight out. That solves most of my problems. The fabric is much tighter. Everything's flatter. It's not sagging nearly as much now. So I'm just gonna attach the fabric right where my thumb is, and then we'll redo these hems to end up right about there or so. So we'll draw a straight line from here to that point, and from here to that corner right there, rehem, reattach. And that should solve a lot of my problems. It takes out a lot of that loose fabric right there. So yeah, sometimes you just gotta mess around to find out. And that's what this channel is all about. All right, got the fabric back on the awning structure. It's rehemmed. Let's test this thing out. Boom. Check it out. A few tweaks we need to do, but man, this looks so much better. All right, so as you can see, the fabric is way flatter now, way less sag. This looks really good. It's pulled nice and tight. The only thing I really need to fix is right here. This is right where that hinge is, and the fabric wants to catch. I'll show you. So we're basically just going to cut around it. We're going to re-hem it back up, and that way it doesn't interfere. All right, with our canopy removed, it's time to get this thing painted. I'm just gonna be using some Rust-Oleum primer and gloss black, I think it's gonna look good. All right, check it out. These parts look so good now. Freshly painted. About to get this thing put back together. All right, this is something I wasn't originally gonna do because the fabric is pretty tight, but I think to get proper watershed, we need to add some of these little guys that flip up. That way we can add some peaks. And that way, if we do get some rain, that'll run off. I'd like it to work without any guy lines, but we'll still have that option since we sewed on those little tabs. So, so yeah, I know I've already painted, so I'm gonna have to remove a little bit of paint, get that welded up, but I think it'll be worth it to do, so. I'm gonna get that installed real quick and get this finished up. All right, so for these little guys, we're using half inch conduit. These are nine inches long. And then we just have these two brackets and these two ends will be welded to the arm of the awning. Just, look just like that. 
we don't need a stopper or anything. The fabric will hold it straight up, no problems. So I'm gonna go weld all these up onto the arms, get them painted, we should be good to go. All right, got everything painted, put back together. These little caps right here, these are called coolant bypass caps. I found them at AutoZone. I love finding random little pieces like this that fit my needs. Um, but I got these because I live really close to an AutoZone. And uh, yeah, they're just a few dollars. I'm sure there's other caps that would work, but these are just like rubber caps and they're just gonna keep from tearing the fabric. You don't wanna have a, just like a cut off piece of metal holding the fabric up. So that's gonna work perfect. Got the other two on here. They're tight enough to where it's going to hold up just fine. Doesn't need any kind of like stopper or anything. So that looks great. Let's get the fabric back on. All right, the awning is pretty much completely done. We just need an awning bag for this thing and we can get this thing mounted on the vehicle. I thought that was going to be as easy as just buying a bag and installing it. But the bag that I bought, this Rhino Rack Batwing, it's not a complete bag. I didn't realize that. This bag is meant to work with Keter railing. It wraps around and slides into a track that's built into the structure of the awning, opposed to the uh, ARB touring bag here, which is a complete bag. This wraps all the way around and just zips down the back, the bottom. This is just not a large enough bag to work. So if you know of a bag that's a complete wraparound bag that works, let me know for sure. Um, I, I just can't keep buying awning bags to see what works. So what we're gonna have to do, I think, is just modify this current bag to be a complete bag. So what I think I'm gonna do is just cut some vinyl fabric and then sew it into the back of this one to make it a complete bag. And then we can put this on the awning and bolt it to the back structure back here. And we should be good. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's get to it. All right, so here's our awning bag. And as you can see, you're looking into the bag here. We have this like six to eight inch space that we need to fill before it's a complete awning bag. These are the Keter rails on the top and the bottom that mount into the aluminum frame that would normally go right here. So I have some vinyl fabric. I think I'm gonna just cut this down. I might double it up to make it extra strong and then we'll sew it into this bag down these two rails and we'll just use the fabric that the Keter rail is on to, uh, to sew the vinyl to. So I'm gonna get this cut and get it sewn in. I don't think it'll be super hard to do. So yeah, let's get to it. All right, now we have a full bag and it looks pretty close. This is the side that we just sewed on in between our zipper and the other side of the bag. This looks pretty good. I uh, had a lot of troubles with my sewing machine for whatever reason. I'm not sure what's going on with it, but uh, that kind of made things difficult. But we got it done, and it looks really good. So now it's time to get this thing on the awning, get this project wrapped up. thing we got to do use a little bit of acetone nobody's ever gonna know nobody's gonna know all right I think we're finally done with this thing let's get it on the vehicle and test it out all right let's see how much she weighs 42.6 not bad Boom, there she is. The fastest opening awning. I love this thing, this is super sturdy. Flip these guys up. I think it's time to get the water hose out. Let's test this thing out, see how she does. All right, here it goes.
Water is shedding off really well. I don't see any spots where the water is coming through the fabric. You can kind of see it beaded up on top. That's, that's on top. That's not coming through at all. Some water is coming right through here where the hinge is, but that's kind of to be expected. It's just landing on the vehicle and going down. But I don't see it pulling up anywhere. All the water is shedding off just how I want it to. This is awesome. This is awesome. I can't believe it. I was kind of expecting, I was kind of expecting water to be coming through the fabric somewhere. Oh, we do have a little bit, we do have a little bit right here at this seam, but it's not very much at all. That's definitely fixable. I'm completely dry under here. This is doing way better than I expected. No water is pulling up hardly. All right, so that concludes the test. It is waterproof. If I didn't have the guy lines on, it definitely would pull up in some spots, I can tell. But the guy lines add enough pitch to where all the water runs off. Barely any leaks down here, which is awesome. We can fix this seam up, no problem. I'm super happy with the way this is performing. All right, guys, that's all I got. I hope you have enjoyed this build as much as I have. I worked super hard on it. I think it turned out really well. So please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you hadn't done so already. If you're interested in the fabric work, I'm going to have a separate video on that. And we'll see you guys in the next one.